Using an EMF 390 electromagnetic field analyzer, uh, the image on the left, you will see we did a reading. This is our bedroom wall, folks. Extremely high reading of 812.6 volts per meter. After some mitigation, we got it down to normal levels of 0.3. But the fact of the matter is, folks, if I wouldn't have had the EMF 390 and did some analyzing around our apartment, I would have never known this instrument potentially saved our lives. If you would like an EMF 390, folks, I suggest that everybody has their home tested for dangerous levels of electromagnetic radiation. I will leave the link in the description to the EMF 390. God bless. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Folks, a uh, few things to talk about today, so we'll start with Lake Oroville update. Right now the water level is at 890.63. That is an increase of 0.32 inches from yesterday. So, going over to the live cam feeds, I have not been able to get the... Uh, live cam for the spillway for the bottom of the spillway all morning I've been trying and it is out of commission however you go to the top of the spillway this is what they've got for the live image for the live cam so no to the bottom of the cam and yes to the top of the cam and uh, though folks the uh, local media continues to mock people on uh, social media for having concerns about the integrity of the dam. We come up with this story. I find this very interesting. Disneyland, dozens of cities could be flooded by dam failure from huge storm engineers warn. This is the LA Times and it starts out with federal engineers are raising alarms that a significant flood event could breach the spillway of Southern California's aging Prado Dam and potentially inundate dozens of Orange County communities from Disneyland to Newport Beach. And it goes on down here to even reference in February 2017 a concrete spillway at the Oroville Dam disintegrated during heavy rains and triggered the evacuation of more than 180,000 people. The head of the California Water Resource Department, which operates the dam, was removed after an independent probe found the failure was the result of lax safety culture. So I just thought that that was pretty interesting that uh, now we might be facing some flooding and dam failure down uh, Southern California, so it says the Los Angeles Times. So let's switch gears a little bit, folks, and this is the NEXRAD Reflectivity Composite Loop Map. I've been monitoring this for about six months now. The two main things that I've been, uh, the anomalies that I've been reporting on are these blooms. You see these blooms? Let's talk about these blooms a little bit for a second. Look at them. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. Look at the faces in these blooms. I see like skull-like faces like aliens. It's just freaky, man. I don't know if like... I don't know what's going on to be honest, folks. I mean, just some freaky looking stuff on radar. And then these other things that... Uh, these other anomalies that we've been reporting on are the electromagnetic spikes. Radiation spikes. And uh, we don't quite know what is causing these anomalies, but I think maybe we do now. Or I've come up with some kind of uh, answer, and let's check it out. Let's listen to this report real quick continues to work on improving weather warnings. A new radar is being tested this year that could double the amount of time you have to seek shelter. Two News meteorologist Carly Smith has more on the impact of this change. Brooke, on average, tornado warnings are issued about 10 minutes ahead of the storm. New technology is allowing weather researchers to increase the lead time to about 20 minutes. It all comes down to radar technology. Right now, National Weather Service radars produce a new radar scan every four minutes. When it comes to a tornado warning, every second counts. 
This is a rare look inside the new advanced technology demonstrator, a radar updating every 30 seconds, thanks to technology first developed by the United States Navy to track missiles. Last year, scientists combined the multifunction phased array radar with the dual pole radar, weather radar to create the advanced technology demonstrator. Instead of one rotating radar beam, the new weather radar will feature multiple beams that can be steered to focus on certain parts of the atmosphere or the storm. It's changing the way we see storms. This will be the first year the new radar is operational. It will be tested at the National Weather Radar Testbed in Norman, Oklahoma. If everything goes well, we could see upgrades to Storm Doppler 2 HD, possibly by 2030. Now All right, so she says 2030. This is the multifunctional phase array system technology. And she says 2030, but I have an, a notion that uh, they have already have this in place. Uh, and perhaps that is what's causing the anomalies, these uh, spikes and these blooms. Now let's go and check this out real quick. The Air Force seeks to develop phased array lasers for weapons and communications. So this technology is, all, is also being used for weapons and communication. So when I thought about that, this, by the way, is from 2004. When I thought about phased array lasers, I started thinking about direct energy weapons and went over to uh, Wikipedia under direct energy weapons. And one, one of the sections here says problems with laser weapons. And it, called, it says blooming. Laser beams begin to cause plasma breakdown in atmosphere in the atmosphere at energy densities of around one megajoule per centimeter, cubic centimeter. The effect is called blooming. It causes the laser to defocus and disperse energy into the surrounding air. Uh, blooming can be more severe if there is fog, smoke, or dust in the air, which we know we have all of those, and we have uh, aerosol particulates as well. So is could this, could this be blooming caused from do directed energy weapons, this multifunctional ray phase array, breakdown of plasma. Let's go back here. Thermal blooming. Thermal blooming is an atmospheric effect seen in high energy laser beams. It is the result of nonlinear interaction of laser radiation. So it's laser radiation with propagation media, usually the air, which is heated by absor absorption of a fraction of the radiation. So now it talks about heating. And folks, we do know that they're heating the atmosphere looks like they've got like little mini harps all over the country operating mini harps all over the country and they are heating the atmosphere so you know when they talk about global warm warming perhaps it's not shield type uh, conversation perhaps we are heating the atmosphere well we know we are and maybe uh that is causing the global warming Folks, it's not farting pigs and cows. Ridiculous. And let's go to the spin thing, too, that I was talking about. The spinning uh, spikes. Animation showing the radiation patterns of a phased array of 15 antenna elements spaced a quarter wavelength apart. The phase difference between adjacent antennas is swept between negative 120 and 120 degrees. To me, that looks very familiar to this. The spinning anomalies that we've been talking about. So is that in fact being caused by the multifunctional phase array system that they have put in place? Don't know for sure. But I do know that Excalibur is a DARPA 
weapon. The DARPA Excalibur program will develop coherent optical phased array technologies to enable scalable laser weapons that are 10 times lighter and more compact. So this phase array system technology is not only used for weather, but it is also used as a weapon. Could this Chinese radar system really be used to play God with the weather? Again, it talks about the multifunctional phase array technology that China has. And into the story, it talks about creating uh, hurricanes. Now, folks, the amazing part about this is this was from 2018. We know that they've been doing this for quite some time. So they're introducing the population. They're introducing us to this technology th that they've been working on and using for years now. I mean, there was an article coming out saying that scientists uh, want to start testing spraying aerosols in the atmosphere, you know, chemtrails, to block the sun for global warming. They've been doing that for years now, folks, probably 20 years now at least. And yet they're starting to come out saying scientists are thinking about doing it. So they're introducing the population to technology that they've been using for a long time, folks. It's quite interesting what's going on right now. Again, multifunction phased array radar, potential to support homeland defense and security missions. This was 2008. Working Group for Multifunction Phased Array Radar. It talks about the focus on a national multifunctional system to deployed in the 2004, 14 to 2022 time frame. So the young lady in the report talked about 2030, and they're talking about 2014 to 2022 time frame. Well, that's now, folks. That's now, and. Uh, Yes, they've been testing the system out for quite some time in Norman, Oklahoma. And here it is. Here's the big sucker right here in Norman, Oklahoma. This is their multifunctional array, array system. The interesting thing about this, folks, is that, uh, first of all, we don't know what it does to our health. We don't know if it's safe or not. But I do know this that this thing is close to the university, it's close to elementary schools and middle, middle schools and high schools and gyms, the YMCA right there. Why are they putting this monstrous thing, it's putting out radiation electromagnetic radiation, microwaves, next to learning institutions, our, our children. I find that uh, to be quite ironic and dangerous, to be honest with you. Here's an interesting story because I think, you know, why not? Why not look up Norman, Oklahoma a little bit and see what's going on over there? Here's a story from 2016 levels of carcinogen in normal Norman drinking water is among highest in the country. So yeah, they've got a lot of uh, chromium six in their water, and it says some of the highest rates in the country are right here in Norman at 39.3 parts per billion. To put that into context, the city of Houston has only. 0.747 parts per billion and New York City has only 0.041 parts per billion and yet Norman has 39.3 parts per billion. Is that related to this uh, multifunctional phase ray system that they have in there? I don't know. 
I don't know. I, there's, but if I was in Norman, Oklahoma, I'd be concerned. Well, I think we should all be concerned because I believe that it is very possible that Nexrad could have upgraded their systems with multifunctional phased array technology. And that would make sense of why we're seeing these anomalies at the end of 2018 and uh, 2019. The blooms, the scary looking blooms. Again, look at those scary looking blooms. Now folks, uh, just think about it. Once 5G is implemented and they've got these repeater antennas on every block of every neighborhood. It is potentially a uh, population controlling environment. I mean, think about it. If you interact, if the multifunctional phase array system interacts with 5G and these repeaters in every neighborhood, well, we've done the study out there, folks, and we know that these frequencies, these microwave frequencies, the millimeter wave frequencies are very harmful to human beings, but they can also do stuff to your mind, right? And we know that they're used in uh, the military. These millimeter frequencies are used in the military, the active denial system, and they've used it before in war and crowd control. So I'm not saying that the government is going to do that, but what I am saying is that they've got the uh, potential to be able to do that. And that once 5G is rolled out, that potential increases greatly. So folks, again, uh, knowledge is power. This is not about fear, not fear mongering, but it's about reality. It's about what's out there. And you should know about it. You shouldn't be in the dark about it. And people have to make informed decisions on what they want to do after finding things out, after doing their own research. And folks, again, do your own research. Don't listen to anybody, what they're saying. I mean, yes, I'll put the links in the description and you should go to them and you should do your own research. Because we try to get it right, but we don't always get it right. I make mistakes. And when I find out I made a mistake, I, I correct it. I get, on, I get on here and I correct it. I'm not too proud to do that. Anyway, folks, uh, I don't know. I've been, uh, the, the mystery of these uh, blooms and spikes has been haunting me for six months now. I think we're getting closer. And it all makes sense, right, folks? The technology, it's just incredible how all-encompassing this technology will be and how powerful it is and potentially dangerous when you put it all together. This umbrella of microwaves. Right? Again, I, and then, you know, please don't, again, don't insult our intelligence and tell us that global warming is because of farting pigs and cows, because it's ridiculous. We must really think that we're idiots, <laughs> you know. Anyway, folks, God bless you. I appreciate uh, you being here. Appreciate your support and prayers. I ask that uh, if you want to continue uh, following what our research, where it brings us, that you subscribe and like and comment. God bless you folks. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.